Here we go now with uh, Verduch. Tommy, of course, is with the Angels today. Uh, we'll have to delve into the Astros, but let's do a little baseball first with Thomas. All right, let's do number one, the Angels themselves. Tom, always a pleasure. Obviously, a big year for him. Otani, Madden, you know, obviously Rendon. Uh, some expectations for a change. I still think they don't have any pitching. But what is your case for them to be a pretty darn competitive team and maybe be in a postseason mix in September? Make a case. Let me hear. Right. Well, you used the right word, I think, expectations, because Joe Madden's looking at this roster here and thinking – this team should be thinking about being a playoff team. Obviously, they haven't been for quite some time. So he's trying to raise expectations here based on the names above the lockers in that clubhouse there. Why not? This is going to be one of the most dynamic offensive teams in baseball. There's no question about that with the addition of Anthony Rendon. With Rendon, Otani, and Trout, this team, first of all, they put the ball in play more than anybody else in baseball anyway. And Rendon does that as well as any power hitter as well. So no problems offensively. I am actually sold a little bit on their pitching, Chris, because I think their offense is so good, they just need to be okay on the mound. And I think with some innings eaters like Dylan Bundy, Julian Tehran, Griffin Cannon coming back for his first full season, and then Otani joins the rotation in May. That's going to be a key. Now, they're slow playing him a little bit because he's recovering from the knee surgery. They're going to get probably one start a week, probably on Sundays. So you could be adding 20 starts from Otani, 25 to 30 from Tehran, 25 to 30 from Bundy, 25 to 30 from Canning. You get the makings of a decent rotation here. And again, with the way they'll score runs, it doesn't have to be great. Yeah, it's still not good enough, Tom, and the bullpen included. But I understand their offense should be excellent. All right, how about Trout? Uh, you know, it's about time we see him in big spots in September. He's due. He's the best player in your sport right now. Give me a little rundown of what to expect out of Mike Trout in 2020. Yeah, there's no doubt that baseball as a whole needs to get their best player onto the showcase of postseason baseball. Nine years now, he's never won a postseason game. Got in once, they were swept. It's very unusual, I think, you know, over that course of history that the best player, inarguably the best player, doesn't get to even one round through the playoffs. So this now, I think you're seeing a lot of excitement here. Listen, it's spring training. Every team's optimistic. I get that. But I think the jump starting that Rendon gave this team and the fact that Otani now, you might see him now for at least four and a half months as a true two-way player. This team, I think, honestly now is talking realistically about being a postseason team. And keep this in mind, early in the season coming out of the gate, they see the Astros ten times in the first oh, really? two or three weeks of the season. Wow. I, think that, I think that works to their favor for them to define themselves and for the Astros to figure out how difficult their season is going to be. Uh, excellent point. All right, let's talk about Houston as a team first. I think that you give a good team a cause with young players, I think that makes them very dangerous. I understand the new pitcher calls a tremendous loss. They're going to get readjusted with, with Dusty, and they're going to get booed all over the place. All right, but still, they got young players who believe. I think they're going to be a – now, they're going to not win a pennant. But I think in a regular season, they're going to win 100 games. What's your take on that? Uh, to me, that's a little high, Chris. I still really respect the amount of talent in that room. And talent alone is not going to go away. There will be distractions. I would not discount the first half of the season and the adjustments they're going to have to deal with in terms of that accountability. A slump bring back questions about the sign-stealing scandal. Even a good stretch for a hitter will bring back some of the questions or suspicions. That's not going away. Treatment on the road, get used to it. They'll get that treatment everywhere they go. Dusty Baker, new to the team, learning the personalities of the team, what makes them tick. I think there is a little bit of a break-in period for this team. And do not discount the loss of Garrett Cole. You know, whether Jacob DeGrom or Garrett Cole, two best pitchers in the game, the reliability of Cole – taking that ball and not just every five days chris but deep into the game this rotation does not have the kind of guaranteed innings right. that the rotation had in previous years mccullers coming back off of tommy john surgery or at the back end let's find out full season from him so let's see about this team there's no doubt in my mind they're a contender they're one of the best teams in the league 
But I do think there's a price to be paid for loss, even just of Garrett Cole, but the atmosphere they'll face day in and day out. Yeah, I think the atmosphere is going to fire him up. Uh, Cole, you cannot replace. So we'll I'll have to wait and see. we got a little bit of a disagreement, you and me, on the atmosphere. Atmosphere, when you give a young team a cause, that scares me, and they're going to want to prove to the whole world how good they are. And Correa gave you a little sense of that in the last couple of days. I, um, I haven't asked you about this. I like it. I think they did a good job. I think they got to juice it up some. What's your take on the new playoff format if, in fact, that goes through in a couple of years? Yeah, I do like it. More importantly, I think TV partners like it. More postseason games, especially competitive, deciding, potential deciding playoff games. Uh, there's no question the MLB owners like this. And I think the players like it, too. They haven't really come out and taken an official stance, Chris, but you're talking about a plan that brings more teams into the postseason. That's good for them. Television loves this, so that means more money. That's good for players. And the fact is, the last couple of years, players have been arguing that not enough teams are really going all out to win. They're trying to win the draft lottery, if you will, more so than the World Series. Well, if in fact, quote unquote, lower that bar, entry to postseason is 84 wins on average for a seventh seed, that brings more teams into play. So a general manager can't stand up there and say, we're building for three years down the road. Just to add maybe one addition of free agent brings more teams into play. And here's the other thing, Chris, I like. At the end of the season, the jockeying for seeds becomes so important that September is full of meaningful games. It's not just to get the number one seed in the bye. It's getting that two seed so you can pick your opponent. Difference between four and five is playing at home or on the road. And of course, the difference between seven and eight is getting into the postseason at all and going home. That means there's a lot more meaningful games in September. So I understand people will think it's watering the game down. Listen, the Cardinals won the World Series with 83 wins. Average win total for a number seven seed, if you do it historically, would be 84. It's not terrible. That team also has to win two out of three on the road to start out and then win, what, 13 games through the postseason. It's hard. But on the whole, I think there's a lot of merit to this idea, and I think the players should be interested. Good boy, Tom. Well done. We'll keep in touch all spring. Thanks for a few minutes. Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the sunshine in Arizona. Appreciate a few minutes here today.